So in today's lecture, we will be starting with the igneous rocks. These are the second uh, type of rocks. In the previous uh, video lecture, we studied with sedimentary rocks. So let us start with the definition. The igneous rocks are formed by cooling of lava or magma inside of the earth or outer surface of the earth. And let us just see a small uh, animation. So you see uh, when the magma, it erupts outside and uh, when it cools, these are uh, basically your igneous rocks and when it cools outside, it is called as extrusive igneous rock and when it cools inside, it is called as intrusive igneous rocks. So formation, now igneous rocks are formed into or basically categorized into three types, the formation. First is volcanic rocks, plutonic rocks and hypobasal rocks. Volcanic rocks are those which are formed on outer surface of the earth and the example for this is basalt and their texture is very fine grained. Okay. And the, this fine grain is attributed to the rapid cooling because when the lava, when it comes outside and it, it cools rapidly because it is exposed to the outer atmosphere. But as compared to when it is inside, inside the earth, the temperature is a little bit higher than what is outside and therefore it does not cool that easily. <clears throat> Second is plutonic rocks. Plutonic rocks are those which are formed at a very deep deep inside the earth so the example is granite <laughs> and they have a very coarse texture as you can see you can even compare the texture here it is such a fine grained texture and here it is a coarse texture then the last one is hypermissile rocks they are formed at an intermediate depth of uh, up to two kilometers and exhibit mixed characteristics of uh, volcanic rocks as well as plutonic rocks an example is porphyrites you can also see the texture it is in between the uh, volcanic and plutonic that is it is neither too fine grained nor too coarse <coughs> next is texture the term texture is defined as a mutual relationship of different mineralogical constituents in the rock it is determined by the size, shape and arrangement of these constituents within the body of the rock. So our texture is again uh, divided into three types. <coughs> First is degree of crystallization, granularity and fabric. We will learn all these three. Now degree of crystallization is again bifurcated into two types. First is hollow crystalline uh, and the rocks which are having these this kind of crystallization they are called as phaneric rocks and second is hollow haline and these rocks are called as affinitic so what is this when all the constituent minerals are distinctly crystallized they are called as hollow crystalline rocks and when all the constituents are very fine in size and glassy or non crystalline in nature they are called as hollow haline here you can see all constituent minerals are distinctly crystallized so it is a hollow crystalline structure and here they are very fine uh, in in size so they come in hollow haline structure the term uh, in between them is uh, mero crystalline and it is commonly used to express the intermediate types that is when minerals are crystallized and others are glassy some minerals of a rock are crystallized and uh, are distinctly identified and some are glassy in nature so such kind of rocks would be called as mero crystalline uh, they would be having a mero crystalline texture coming to granularity so here we have coarse grain fine grain and all so coarse grain means when the average grain size is above 5 mm the constituent minerals are then easily identified with naked eye. Medium grain, when the average grain size lies between 5 and 1 mm and uh, use of magnifying lens is often required for identifying the minerals, then they would be termed as median grain texture. And the last one fine grain, when the average grain size is less than 1 mm 
Uh, in such rocks, identification of the constituent mineral grains is possible only with help of microscope for which very thin rock sections have to be prepared for microscope studies. Next we come to fabric. Now for, before uh, going into the classification of fabric, we will learn these two terms, dimensions and shapes. So in dimensions we have equigranular and inequigranular. <coughs> so by the name itself it says that equigranular means that the rocks or the minerals, all minerals should have an approximately equal dimension. But in inequigranular, some minerals could be large, some will be very small. So they will not be they will not be in proportions. They would be uh, some some would be large, some would be small, some like that. For shape, we have three types of shapes. First is euhedral, which is a perfectly shaped mineral. Second is subhedral, which is a semi-perfect type of uh, mineral. And third is anhedral, which is an irregular shape. And based on these things, we classify fabric into three types. First is panadiomorphic, which is uh, majority crystals are fully developed shapes. So they can be uh, either euhedral, all of them, or they can be either all of them subhedral or anhedral, but they are fully developed. Hypidiomorphic, which in which rock contains crystal of all shapes that is all of these shapes would be present in a single single rock and allotriomorphic in which most of the crystals are anhedral that is irregular shape and when we mean perfectly shaped it means by symmetry and you know the angles have to be perfect and semi perfect means they might be in, in symmetry but the angles might not be as perfect, something like that. Okay. Next, we come to structure. We have finished the textural classification. Now we'll see the structural classification. So we have first flow type of structure. It is defined by development of parallel or nearly parallel or bands in the body of igneous rock. So here I will show you an image. You can see the lava which is getting cooled down, and this is. Uh, a geologist who is trying to get some samples of that live lava into this bucket. You can see these folds here. They are nearly parallel to each other and when they cool down they will they will have or they will retain this structure itself. So such kind of structure when it is formed it is called as a flow structure. Next structure is pillow structure. This is cat categorized by the development of bulbous overlapping pillow this is formed when the upper surface gets solidified and the lava underneath is still hot and capable of flowing so yeah you can see in the image as well she is resting her head on that uh, yeah so what happens exactly is that when the lava let's say i'll consider this only that this top portion gets cooled let me use some other color so this top portion gets cooled but the lava below this is still flowing and it will come from underneath and it will cool ahead of it ahead of this rock just forming a pillow type of structure next is blocky these are structural variations developed due to different mobility of lava. High viscous dry lava undergo very little movement after the eruption before cooling. So you might have studied viscosity in fluid mechanics, right? Viscosity is the resistance offered by the liquid to its own flow. So what happens is when the lava erupts from a volcano, the it is it it has different uh, means it some some part of that lava might be highly viscous some part will be, would be less viscous so what happens the one which is highly viscous it will move very slowly because it is offering more resistance and since it moves slowly it cools faster 
because it it is exposed more time to the atmosphere as compared to the less viscous lava which is mo moving very fast so that lava would move faster and uh, it will take or uh, it will you know uh, just come on top of the previously cooled or the slow or the highly viscous lava and form uh, a rock ahead of it and that would cause a blocky type of formation so you can see here how the how these blocks have been formed okay and in the same uh, in the same uh, volcanic eruption you can see different kind of structures okay it is not only that in one uh, volcanic eruption you will only see blocky or you would only see the pillow type structure you can see different types of structures forming in a single volcanic eruption next is ferulitic these are formed due to rapid mineral growth after cooling of lava it is a common feature of volcanic and hypobasal type of igneous rocks so if the igneous rock is formed due to these formations volcanic and hypobasal then there is a chance of getting a ferulitic structure it is something like this okay uh, now next is orbicular it is a rare type of structure of igneous rock in which it appears as if composed of ball like aggregations so you can see these ball like aggregations here next jointing structure <clears throat> cooling of magma sometimes forms cracks in the rocks which propagate throughout the body of the structure forming joints now if if this is a rock which is uh, cooled which is which is undergoing cooling due to the temperature gradation or due to temperature variation of uh, let's say uh, you know there is a temperature gradient of on this side of the rock it's it's a high temperature and on this side of the rock it's a low temperature or on the top on the top it is a low temperature and on the bottom it is low temperature so these this forms a temperature gradient basically and because of that some cracks start occurring in the rock this is only one of the reasons that i have given there may be another other reasons as well but what happens is slowly these cracks which have been formed they start propagating that is they start growing horizontally or in the in the direction of their formation so when they form like this when they these cracks propagate horizontally it is called as a sheet structure so if the cracks are propagating horizontally it is called as a sheet structure if the cracks are propagating vertically it is called as a columnar structure so yeah it is called as a columnar structure yeah so you can see in this let me just show you how the cracks uh, when they had formed on the surface they move vertically downwards forming columns next is vesicular structure in process of cooling and crystallization many gases are trapped inside the rock which try to escape forming cavities in the rock entire rock mass such structure is called as vesicular structure so uh, when the lava erupts it is uh, it it contains many gases inside it and when it forms into a rock those gases might get trapped and they always want to come out because of the pressure difference outside and inside the rock they always want to escape out of the rock so and if the rock is soft enough that they can you know just escape out then they will leave these cavities inside the rock such structure is called as a vesicular structure next is myelolytic structure sometimes these cavities which are formed in the rock they get filled with volatile components which may enlarge the cavities and form unusual minerals in them so you see these cavities they have they got filled with some minerals 
and such a structure is called as myrolytic structure now we will study forms of igneous rocks so when a volcanic eruption happens there may be rocks inside inside the earth so these are all the rocks which are there and the volcano it gets lodged into all these crevices correct all the horizontal bodies of these uh, these volcanic eruptions they are called as concordant bodies okay all the horizontal bodies that you are seeing wherever the uh, magma has lodged lodged itself they are called as concordant bodies and first type of concordant body is called as sill the intrusion between bedding planes or sedimentary layers is called as sill we have studied sedimentary rocks and we had seen how they are layered right you can refer to my previous video and you can check that, that there is a layered structure in the sedimentary rocks and it it may happen that there is a sedimentary rock here and the volcano or the magma which is coming it may you know uh just get into those get in in between the those layers so such type of intrusion between the bedding planes or sedimentary layers is called as sill so ideally what you will get if uh, if these are the layers of sedimentary rocks you know different rocks getting deposited over each other you may have in between igneous rock of them correct next is faculith so these are the igneous rocks that are formed in the crest and trough of bend so if if there is a bend you are like this and you stumped uh if there is a bend here and the magma gets lodged inside so these structures are called as faculiths it's a type of concordant body next just take a look here what what is happening the magma which got lodged here it may sometimes you know uh, form a, or arch this strata upwards so these are intrusions due to which the invaded strata is arched upwards or deformed into a dome so when the magma is going like this when the magma is going in in all the force here it may sometimes you know just arch whatever the layer here is there and such kind of structure is called as laccolith next we study the discordant bodies discordant bodies are uh, as compared to concordant bodies concordant bodies were the horizontal ones discordant bodies are the vertical ones so you can see that there are vertical bodies as well here correct this is a vertical body so first are dikes these are vertical bodies created across the bedding planes of the rocks so if there is a sedimentary rock having a layered sedimentary rock you know the first layer second layer third layer and if the volcanic eruption happens like this in it gets in between those bedding planes so the, this can be called as a dike volcanic neck this is also a dike basically so here you see this is the volcanic neck it is called as neck because from that point the the magma or the lava it comes out sir in some cases vents of quiet volcanoes have become sealed due to magma cooling along the neck of volcano and igneous rock cooling there so sometimes when the lava is coming out some lava gets stuck here and it gets cooled there itself so the volcanic necks of some volcanoes become sealed off and uh, means yeah they become quiet volcanoes quiet volcanoes are the ones which do not erupt third is batholith now these are huge bodies of igneous rocks that are both concordant and discordant in nature 
with relation to the rock uh, to qualify as a batholith it should be greater than 100 square kilometer and its depth not traceable so you can see this body here it is it is spanning horizontally as well it is it, it, it is spanning vertically but how much horizontal and how much vertical to qualify as batholith the horizontal spanning in area should be greater than 100 square kilometer and the depth of it is uh, should be so much that it cannot be traced then that huge structure would be called as batholith and it won't come into discordant or uh, neither into concordant it is a separate structure itself <coughs> or it can be considered as both concordant and discordant so this was it for uh, igneous rocks in the next lecture we will be studying the metamorphic rock till then take care thank you